All righty. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Jacqueline Renee Show. I apologize for that um, commercial. Uh, I'm not sure we are having some technical problems there in the background, so I apologize for that. But thank you for attending the Jacqueline Renee Show. I'm Yolanda Moore, and I'm going to be your host today because uh, Pastor Jacqueline is um, on the road taking care of some things today. So I am honored and um, really appreciate her providing me with this opportunity. So hopefully I can fill her shoes today to bring you the Jacqueline Renee show. And today we're going to talk about something that is really truly to my heart. I truly do uh, adore, uh, that's probably the wrong word. I really do enjoy eating healthy and learning everything there is to have a healthy life. So today our show is about abundant healthy life and we will be discussing health and juicing. Um, so as we always do, before we get started, I'm just going to follow the same format that Pastor Jacqueline Normie follows. Um, today, August is National Wellness Month. So this is right on time where we're talking about abundant, healthy life. And, you know, wellness focuses on self-care, managing stress, and promoting healthy routines. So juicing could be a healthy routine. It also creates wholesome habits in your lifestyle all month long and see how much better you will feel in adopting this process. And so today, August 22nd, is National Be an Angel Day. I collect angels, love angels. So today it, we're, we're encouraging you to go out and do good deeds and kindness to others by supporting those in need and inspiring others to kindness. And we display this act of being an angel on earth. So go out today and do some kind of act of kindness on Be an Angel Day. So I'm so excited today, you guys, because our special guest is Beverly Johnson, and she's all about abundant health and juicing, and I've had her products, and they're awesome. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and um, share her bio with you so we can get started with um, interviewing Beverly today. She's been a nurse for over 30 years. She's married, and she's a mother of five children. She's a commandment keeper. And she started her business, Abundant Health, in 2014. On June 20 of 21, she added Nutracetica. You're going to probably have to get me there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't practice that word. Um, Nutraceuticals to support wellness, healing, and boost immune function. So welcome, Beverly, to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Yeah, so I hope I didn't leave anything out. Is there anything you want to add to your bio that I've already um, mentioned? No, that was perfect. That was perfect. Awesome. So we'll just jump into it then. How about that? Absolutely. Um, you already have a career. So what made you start your juicing business? Since you're a nurse, I can understand, but what made you start? What motivated you? Believe it or not, it had absolutely nothing to do with my nursing career. It had everything to do with my husband. My husband, he was um, suffering with some pain in his knees and his knees had started swelling. Um, this is back in like 2008. And so it was like a natural progression of things where, uh, you know, he, he had gained weight. I had gained weight, but overall every year I'd go for my physicals and my lab work would be normal and my physicals would be normal and everything would be wonderful. And so, but his physicals on the other hand, not such a good outcome for him. Um, he, he was, uh, he had high blood pressure. He had high cholesterol. He um, had uh, achy joints. He was in a lot of pain um, in his knees. Um, and he, uh, he was a snorer. And so he had sleep apnea and just, he had a whole gamut of things going on with him. Um, and so, you know, I had encouraged him to uh, drink water instead of Dr. Peppers and Mellow Yellows, you know, because that's not doing him any good. Um, I encouraged him to not eat so many sweets because he likes, he likes sweets. And so um, I basically, you know, would talk to him on a regular basis. Well, 
like anyone, everyone has to have their own path and make their own decisions. And so he had got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And he had also started, his pain increased in his joints. And so he started, um, fluid started accumulating in his knees. And so he went to the doctor and they drew off like 200 milliliters of fluid from each knee. And they, they scheduled him for a knee arthroscopy which is when they put a scope in your knee and look in to see what's going on and what's causing the fluid. Mm -hmm. And they diagnosed him as being pre-arthritic and told him by the time, and this was, this was in 2008. So we're, this is 2021 and we're 51 and 52 now. Well, they said by the time he turned 50, that he would need bilateral knee replacements. <laughs> so I was like, the devil is a liar. <laughs> amen, amen. But, um, you know, he, he I, I had started watching um, a lot of videos like food, food matters and trying to encourage him to watch them with me. And so that he understood that, you know, it matters what you put in your body and you want to eat things to heal your body and drink things to heal your body as opposed to tearing your body down it's like i guess that's where nursing comes in because he actually would listen a little bit after having that diagnosis from the doctor and getting that news from the doctor he started kind of listening to me and um and so uh finally uh, in 2010 he finally came to me and it's like you know what Bev? i'm just so tired of being overweight and I'm tired of hurting all the time and I'm ready to do something. And so I said, okay, all right. I say, well, let's stop eating meat and let's stop drinking sodas. He was like, I don't know about all that. He's like, I, I can let go of the sweets and the sodas and uh, let's try that. And, and I was like, okay, oh, speak, okay. And this and this is my love. Mm -hmm. Sorry, he's getting ready to go to work. But um, so uh, anyway, he he was willing to let go of eating sweets and to let go of the sodas, and so he started drinking water more often, and uh, he traded out sweets for eating fruit. And so I was like, okay. So he was seeing a little bit of difference in, you know, him not, his knees not swelling up like they did before. He was like, okay, there might, so I guess in his mind, he was like, there may be something to this. So he agreed a few months after that to stop eating, that we could stop eating pork and we could stop eating beef. And well, he really didn't eat beef. I had to give up beef because I was going to do this journey with him, even though I didn't have health problems, but I was overweight as well. And, you know, so I needed to work on that. So, <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm going to do this with him and that it make me better. It's going to make him better. And so we're going to be better as a family because if me and dad are better, the kids are going to be better because we, if we don't buy it, we're not going to eat it and drink it. Right. So everybody was going to benefit from all of this. So he also let go of eating chicken. So chicken, pork, and beef. So what we did was for the rest of the year of 2010, we ate salads and we would have salmon. That was the only thing we would have. Well, December 11th, going into the new year was our last salmon and, and, and salad dinner. Starting January of 2012, we decided we're going to go vegetarian. So no more meat. But we didn't give up the bread and we didn't give up the eggs and we didn't give up cheese. So needless to say, we was putting on weight. We still, you know, was maintaining our weight. And so it's like, you know, we're going to have to do something about this too. And so, you know, even though he wasn't having, like I said, the swelling in his knees anymore, he uh, still were maintaining at our, our weight and his weight was 320. And I, at that time I was like 280 something. 
So yeah, I, and I'm only five five, and he's like five five eleven. So needless to say, we're, we're very overweight. So during the course of us being vegetarian and still having bad habits, as far as things that we need to get some fats out of our life, um, I started watching more of the documentaries like Food Matters, Hungry for Change, Food Inc., Forks Over Nice, Vegucated, um, because all these things, knowledge creates, knowledge is power. And so when you know better, you do better and you know the why you're doing something. Well, the pivotal documentary was Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. And I watched it first and I, what, what was the, Big thing for me was during this whole course of this man's journey, uh, Joe, Joe Cross, he did a juice fast. And not only him, but there was another big guy that was a trucker that did a juice fast. And they, had, they were on all these medications and they were suffering with all these inflammatory processes that was going on with them. And I was like, if they can do it, he can do it. That's the only thing I was thinking in my mind. If they can do it, my husband can do it. And he'll see they can do it. And then he'll know he can, they can do it. So, you know, it's like, it was one of them things. I was excited. And I was like, yeah. you know, so I was like, babe, you got to watch this. You got to watch this documentary. So I bugged him. Oh, I bugged him. I bugged him. I bugged him until he watched it. So finally, when he watched it. I was like, so what did you think? He's like, babe, I don't know. He's like, 60 days, just juice. I was like, I'll make all the juice. I'll do all the work. I just, you just drink. Right. And he was like, he was like, okay. So that was in, that was like where he deter he decided we was going, we was going to do it. It was, I want to say like March or April. Well, Couple of months later, June 1st, 2013, we started our juice fast. Y'all doing a juice fast is like come to Jesus. It's come to Jesus. It's, it's it, it, you know what? It's only because we had a made up mind and my husband, he's one of those type of people. If he say he gonna do something, he all, he all in, he doing it. And I'm an all or nothing kind of girl. So we, we kind of like a good match. <laughs> so, you know, it was, I ain't gonna lie. It was hard work. It was hard work, but I was committed. And the thing is, I wanted him to live and not die. I wanted him to get well. I wanted him, him to be the best version of himself. And so this was really a labor of love. Honestly, this was a labor of love. So... I was like, Lord, you're going to have to help me with this because I don't know what I'm doing. I had watched all these videos and I did my research on juicers. And so I had learned through the, because uh, I would watch like uh, comparison videos on which juicer is the best juicer and why is it the best juicer? And I read this, okay. And I also got this book that was called Your Comprehensive Green Juicing Guide, The Only 10 Recipes You Will Ever Need. And it's by Farnoosh Brock. And I read that book and I looked at those recipes. They were easy recipes. I was like, okay, these are the, 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 those were the only 10 juices we did for 60 days. Wow, that is awesome. 60 days. And another thing I did was I hooked up with a local farmer to pick up produce. And oh my gosh, called Next Step Produce in um, Newburgh, Maryland. I live in White Plains, Maryland. And so it's like going towards uh, the Henry Nice Bridge for all those that live in La Plata area. You know what I'm talking about. So I we would go and get our produce from the farm. And we developed a little relationship with the farmer. And it was like, it was excellent. It was awesome. Now, let me tell you, this juicing, okay, so this juicing process, for me, okay, so for me, I was, to me, it was a blessing to do the work because I got the benefit of the aromatherapy of juicing the produce, wow. plus, plus, I got to taste 
some stuff. So it's like where he was only drinking juice, I would slice a cucumber and I eat a piece of cucumber if I wanted to. <laughs> you know? Right, right. But this, but this is what I noticed. And this is where I got my big to dot to dot moment in regards to the difference between farm produce and grocery store produce. Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing like homegrown stuff. And then, okay, and I'm gonna just I'm gonna just talk about this cucumber. Grocery store cucumber tastes like cardboard. The farm cucumber was juicy, it was sweet, and it was delicious. And I don't know, and okay, so okay, another okay, so and, and to be and to be fair, and to be fair, uh I do know that once you start detoxing, your palate changes as well. And so the high fructose corn syrup and the sugars that are in the majority of the processed foods and foods I was eating before we detoxed, right. it alters your taste buds and where things things don't taste like they really taste. And so you have a more enhanced palate after you detox as well. And so you're actually tasting things better as well. But let me let me digress. I'm gonna go back. Go back and tell us how you started this business. I'm so excited to hear this story. Oh, okay, so the thing is, okay, once we completed the juice fast, now during the whole process of the juice fast, I had to figure out, because the okay, so the plan was, once we completed the juice fast, we were gonna be vegan. Okay giving up the cheese, giving up the eggs, giving up bread, you know, we going vegan. And so my husband was like, we doing what? And I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, okay. So I knew that if we were gonna go vegan, that I would, I had to learn how to prepare vegan dishes that were compatible, comparable to our favorite things we like to eat. Right. So, and I knew they needed to be colorful and they needed to be good. So I bought a lot of cookbooks. I bought a lot of cookbooks. And I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm not no fancy like cook or anything. So the cookbooks had to be simple, easy things that didn't involve a whole bunch of extrav extravagant ingredients. You know, it's like I needed to keep it simple. Right. And, and just tasty and simple. So I did, I, I, went, I, yeah, I, went, I went on a Kindle Fest and I just downloaded all kinds of different books, lots, lots of recipe books. And so I would, I would always like try recipes and like I'd, I'd try to perfect one thing at a time. And like, I found Google to be my best friend because I'm from Alabama and so I'm used to Southern cooking and it's like, I, I found myself Googling a whole lot of things. Um, what, how, what's, what's a vegan egg? And it would, it would tell me, you know, you get uh, flax seed and water, you know, and make it, it makes it into a congealed, looks like an egg yolk, you know, and you use that for it to replace eggs. Or if I needed buttermilk for a recipe, you get the almond milk and add some vinegar to it, apple cider vinegar, and let it sit for a little bit. That's buttermilk. Um, you know, I just you had I had to Google things to figure out. You know, like even like if I made a vegan dessert, how do what's a vegan thickener? You know, I can I can use the tartar or I can use the uh, uh, agar or anyway, it's different things. Whatever they listed, uh, arrowroot, arrowroot, yes. I could use that to thicken, like if I was making a, a vegan dessert, um, you know? So the thing is, you know, a lot of people would ask me, it's like, how did you do it? How did you do it? I'm like, a lot of hard work. My husband, oh, it was easy, blah, blah, blah. Bro, you only was drinking and eating. Stop playing, it's not easy. <laughs> but the bottom line is that, um, in the, at the end of the 60 days, he did go to the doctor and they drew his blood. His cholesterol was down. 
when they took his blood pressure, his blood pressure was awesome. He had not had any headaches and he stopped snoring. Wow, that is a big one. Not snoring anymore. And I was like, and he did not have any pain in his knees anymore. Wow. And this is just 60 days and, and we lost between the two of us, a hundred pounds. I lost like 50 something and he lost 50 something. So like over a hundred pounds. And so, and we've maintained that. And the reason why we've maintained that is because neither one of us are avid exercisers. And I do not, I do not have portion control. <laughs> I don't play the broccoli, okay? Y'all forgive me. I eat well, but I eat a lot. I do. I have not gained the weight back, but I have not gotten skinny either. But that was never the goal in the first place. The goal was to be healthy and to have good lab results and to feel better. So Beverly, come on, tell me, how did you start this business from all of this? This all sounds interesting and great, but just, just, just humor me. How did you end up going into business after discovering all this? My husband made me. He said, Bev, I feel so good. We got to share this with other people. Mm -hmm. I said, are you sure? <laughs> I'm so not the entrepreneur. I am not. He was like, Bev, Bev, I'll take care of it. He's like, you just got to make this stuff, but I'll take care of everything. Well, I ended up getting excited and creating my own website. I created my own website. Um, he did all like he did all the business stuff as far as with the state and federal stuff. He did all of that paperwork and got the articles in, of, of, incorpor of corporation, all that stuff. He did the business. He does the business side of it. I do the fun stuff. The fun stuff is I get to make the juices for people. I get to cook the food for people. I get to do those kind of things. I get to go. Actually, we have a lot of fun when we get booked to do talks at different churches and um, and share our story as well as we do a PowerPoint and we we talk about eating healthy and the and the importance of using recipes. The importance of because see they don't need to recreate the wheel. I know a lot of people ask me like Bev, are you gonna do a cookbook? I'm like, no. <laughs> want to do a cook I don't want to do a cookbook I was like I don't want to recreate the wheel and, and the thing is it's so funny because when I do L, when I do make the recipes I do tweak them a little bit you know and make them my own because I've I've, en I've enjoyed using the different spices in my cabinet that I've never used before Awesome. And I do notice, you know, my, my girlfriend Rhonda is on and I do know because I've had your juices as well. And I know they're very tasty and awesome. And Rhonda has a testimony stating that, you know, she had high cholesterol. And when she started drinking your juices, she went back to the doctor and her cholesterol was off the chain, you know, no more issues or problems. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so, so Rhonda has a testimony that your products do actually work and, and have helped her with her, her cholesterol. So, Kept bugging her too. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me it's working. <laughs> yeah. So, so Beverly, I know you talked about you and your husband, and you also have five children. So, so tell me, how has this changed your entire family's life by adopting this lifestyle? So, how did your children adapt to all this? Okay, so unfortunately, uh, our three grown children were already grown and out of the house when we started this. So the only two that really are getting the brunt of all of this are our 15-year-old Christopher Johnson and our 17-year-old Andrew Johnson. And Andrew, okay, so Christopher, he's my, he's my, he's my healthy baby. So he, he likes eating the veggie things that I make. Andrew, on the other hand, is a junk food junkie. And so it's a little bit more taxing to get him to try stuff. But he will. He does try it. And he'll be like, it's OK. But he'd be but I say, you want some more. He'd be like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and my mama, she'll laugh because she was here when he would do it. She like, oh, that means he don't like it. <laughs> yeah. So 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 share with us, um, what is your process for juicing? And I know you already st stated that juicing makes you feel different. So if you can incorporate those two what what do you, you what is your process okay so uh 
the first thing I do when I go purchase, I, well, I make the juice to order. So I want to make sure that when my clients get their juice, it's made the day they're picking it up because they have a 10 day window because I use a Norwalk cold press juicer. And so they have a 10 day uh, window to drink their juice. And so that's another thing I don't, I really don't like for people to order more than a 10 day supply. And that's only after they've done a three day to know they can drink what they need to drink within the three days, because I don't want them to waste their money. I like to be more conscious about and realistic about people's goals when they want to do this, because even though, even though they didn't make the juice, and I'm making the juice and it's hard work, I want them to get their money's worth out of the juice. So, you know, I don't, and if, if, it, if they find that after they tried the three days and it, it takes them seven days to do the three days of juice, then I, I like them to use that as a guide to incorporate that into how long, you know, how, how really how many juices do you need and what your plan is and how you're going to do this. So it's, it's, it's for, it's, it's emotional. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, you know, I, I know a lot of us, I know for myself as well, you know, I know juicing is great. I've had your juices. They're awesome. But a lot of us do smoothies. So can, can you tell the audience, what is the difference between juicing and smoothies? Okay, so smoothies are, they can be a meal replacement based on the ingredients you use in them, where juice, juicing is not a meal, the juices are not a meal replacement. But if you're doing a fast, you can do like up to, you can do a three-day fast on juice, but you can't exercise while you're doing that fast. As opposed to if you're doing smoothies, it's a meal replacement. So you can function, you can exercise, you can do all of that. And it, like I say, ingredients are important. Okay. The ingredients are important. And that's pretty much the difference. Juicing, you don't work out. And it's a fast where smoothies are meal replacements. And that's, that's, that's if you're using good ingredients that are well-rounded so it gives you everything you need in that smoothie. Okay, okay, great, okay. So um, you talked about juicing and you also briefly tapped into it, but can you tell us um, how you will feel different if you start juicing regularly? Okay, so one of the biggest parts of juicing not only is hydration. Okay. Okay. When your body is hydrated, because see, so many, I've met so many people that don't drink water like they're supposed to. And believe it or not, I think because I use the English cucumber in my juices, you have a lot of hydration that occurs when you drink my juices. So not only do you hydrate your body, it's good for your skin which is your largest organ on your body. And it's definitely good for your inner organs, yeah. you know, because everything functions succinctly, you know, everything has its purpose and, and hydration is so important. Another thing is the ingredients that I use decrease inflammation and it, it uh, boosts your immune system. Those are things that are very important, especially in this day and time. But, you know, um, and it's very, and, and the juices are very nutritious. I do, I am not a skimper when it comes to ingredients. Um, I like to make sure to use a certain amount of each ingredient so that your bottle is full, filled with veggies veggie juice from the vegetables, as well as you get your green apple in, you get your uh, one uh, eighth of a uh, pineapple in there, you get your your thumb uh, piece of your ginger in there, you get, and also alkalinity is important as well. Mm -hmm. I add lemon in there and people think that lemon is acidic. It's acidic when it's outside of your body, when it's inside of your body, it's alkaline. 
It works inside your body as alkal uh, alkalizing agent. So all these things are important for healing your body. And so I, you know, I take all that and, and I take, I take these things into consideration. Uh, I use a stalk of celery because so often, you know, especially like in the summer times, you sweat a lot, you may, you know, deplete your body of sodium, which leads to people having a chip, uh, uh, wanting some potato chips uh, and that celery combats that urge or that craving for potato chips because it, it has that salty in it, you wow, know? That's really a good fact to know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. And so, you know, and so it, it, it's, it's and, and another thing, people, <laughs> they poo poo on this, but they don't know. <laughs> there is protein in vegetables and fruits. Oh, There's right. protein in vegetables and fruits. And so you are getting what you need when you drink the nutrients you need. You are getting what you need when you drink the juices and with the amount of, of each vegetable that I put in your juice bottle, you're getting what you need when you drink my juices. Awesome. Now let's say that I want to start juicing and I don't own a juice machine. What is the best advice for getting started and is it expensive? And what kind of equipment would I need if I wanted to start? Okay, so when my husband and I, when we, when we, our first juice machine is my favorite juice machine, and I still use that juice machine, and it's the Omega Masticating Juicer. Uh, I love, I love that it's a corkscrew masticating juicer and the pulp comes out of one end and the juice comes out of another spout and it makes the best juice, but that juice needs to be drank within three days. So I only make enough for, for us to have for two days because I want us to get the maximum amount of micronutrients that are living into our body. So I don't want it to sit. It's like, I want us to drink it up, you know, as soon as possible so it can do its thing. It's almost like when you, when you, when, once I juice the juice and it's like when I get ready to drink the juice and I'm like, ah, it's like a ah, moment. I'm just telling you, it's like that. It's like that. It's exciting y'all. It's yeah, like, it sounds for, like it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So I want to take a moment. I want to switch gears because I know early on you talked about you guys gave up your chicken, your beef, um, and 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 some other um items. And so, do you make plant based foods? And if so, can you expound on that? I do, I do. And I my the newest thing that I've been making is the jackfruit crab cakes. Wow. <laughs> I've had jackfruit. I've never made it into a crab cake though. Sounds awesome. So good. And it's so simple. Oh my gosh. It's less than 10 ingredients. Okay. The jackfruit, cauliflower, scallions, parsley, and red bell pepper. Okay. Those are the main ingredients to the crab cake okay. with jackfruit. Okay. And I'm telling you, it's the bomb. It's the, but it's a, that's like the newest thing. Rhonda <laughs> just gave me a habit. This is the newest thing that, I, that I've been making uh, with the jackfruit. But, but you can do all kinds kind of things with jackfruit oh my goodness and it's so delicious but not only that I totally enjoy like uh butternut squash before I became vegan I had never had butternut squash before I became vegan I had never had spaghetti squash mm -hmm. um there are just so many things and like uh one of my favorite favorite uh recipe books is um let me see because it's Jennifer Cornbleach. She's the uh she's the um oh raw food made easy for one or two people by Jennifer Cornbleach and she also has a YouTube uh channel. 
This woman, oh my God, she has a recipe for raw marinara that is to die for. And you can make zucchini noodles and put it on top, put that marinara on top of zucchini noodles and it makes the noodles dente right before you eat. And I mean, I'm just telling you, it is delicious. And I think what makes it so good is you're using all fresh ingredients. Also, another thing I'd never used before I became vegan and I use recipe for the uh, marinara sauce is sun-dried tomatoes. I never used sun-dried tomatoes in my life, mm-hmm. ever. And that's what makes the marinara taste like it's got meat in it. Okay. And you use a food processor. You don't even cook the stuff. You just use a food processor, put all the fresh ingredients in it, the fresh basil, the fresh oregano, the fresh garlic, the fresh onion. You, you put all fresh stuff in them. T- tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes. It's the bomb.com. It just, oh, burst in your mouth. Um, I make a, a, a vegan... Uh, cheesecake, I make, I actually make vegan cheesecake tarts and I love lemon. So I put lemon in mine and oh my gosh. And the base of it is walnuts and dates. Wow. It's so good. It's so good. And, um, I made, oh, I made this, uh, I made this, uh, this cream, uh, it's almost, it, it reminds you of Cool Whip, but I made, I made, I made a, a vegan Cool Whip, I guess you could, I just call it that, a vanilla cream. And I used fresh vanilla bean. Yeah. It was so good. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh. And what the, the one thing I love about vegan desserts and the using of uh, dates and things like that is it has a low glycemic index. So it's good for people that are diabetic. So if you're diabetic or you're trying to reverse that thing, that's something you can have. Okay. Awesome. So you're making me hungry right now. So <laughs> was it easy to switch from regular cooking to plant-based preparing for food? Was that an easy switch? It's not easy. It's not easy because everything that you've been taught or that you've learned all your life. Now, mind you, I was in my 40s when we started this. I've been doing cooking the way I've been cooking all my life, you know, and it's like now it's like I'm, I'm learning this new thing. But I was excited about it because my goal was to heal my husband. It's like so it was it was I'm telling you, it, it was not I did not. I, it was fun. I made it fun. Right. Made it fun. And like I say, recipes were my friend. Honestly, recipes were my friend. And you just, and, I, and like I tell my friends, you know, that are like, how do you do it? And I say, you make it your new normal. Like, you can't, because the thing is, once you make up your mind to do this, it's like, don't go back. It's like, don't go buy stuff that you know is not part of the recipes that you're going to be making. Don't do it. Me, I, I remember me and my husband, <laughs> we had gone to the store and he couldn't, he, he, uh, he, <sighs> We were at a tug of war in regards to our boys and we were getting groceries and he started putting chips in the cart. And I said, what are you doing? He's like, the boys need some snacks. I said, like, uh, apple, banana, grape. It's like, what's this? What you doing? Right. And so my way of uh, taking a stand was I'm not touching it. You want to kill him, you kill him. I'm not touching it. That was my stance. And he was like, I can't believe you. Why would you, <laughs> do, like Why would you do me like that? I was like, do you like what? It's like, you. that's death. <laughs> right, right. I die, that's death. I'm doing all this work and you're going to put death in the shopping cart. Put that thing up. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. He's like, babe, get the, uh, I'm not touching it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so Beverly. Um, I have a question for you from the audience. It's a very good question because you mentioned um, one of your juicers, the juice is only good for three days. And you mentioned that another one of your juicers, normally you, when people purchase your juices, you tell them that they only are good for 10 days. So can you freeze the juice and would it still be good? <laughs> I guess that was an insult. Like chefs say, when people 
had their steak well done. <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. So this is what, okay. So this is what I've been taught. I have a client that is in Arizona. I think he's in Arizona. He's a, he's a bodybuilder. And uh, he told me that he froze his juices and that when he thought them, they were delicious still. And I said, okay, I didn't like it, but okay. He paid his money for it. I was like, okay. I personally, I prefer you to drink your juice fresh as fast as possible because micronutrients and even though the juice is good for 10 days the living organisms aren't aren't living for 10 days so my thing is i like you to get as much of the living part of it in your body as soon as possible and that means if you drink three of the mugs in one day do that do it do it but you know but but um yeah, I, I, I personally, I don't, I don't subscribe to the ju- the freezing part of it. Although, like I said, I have a customer that said he froze his and he, when he thought it, it tasted delicious. So I was like, okay. Okay, great. So my last question, which could lead to a little bit of other questions. What products and services do you offer? So before the pandemic, I would do vegan tasters at my house. And it would I would do uh, where you'd have a big za- salad and my salads are not regular salads. I do beet shavings and sprouts and all kinds of different things. It's very colorful and very pretty and it's a very nice salad. And I make homemade dressings for people to taste a homemade ranch dressing or homemade vinaigrette made you know it's like I make different dressings for people to taste with their salad um as as well as I do a main dish I do a vegetarian dish and then I do a lot of sides and then I do some desserts uh I even do soup sometimes like in the winter months I'll do a soup to add to the uh, menu but um we would get together I would have my banner up and have my display out and we would my husband and I we would talk to everyone about our journey just like if we did a a, um a conference or something at a church or something we did do the same thing but you just get to mingle and be at the house and you actually get to see me do some make something you know like if if uh somebody's like oh let me see you do the juicer thing or something and I'll do the juice you know I have a few things and I'll make like some ginger lemonade which is something that's very easy and quick to do and doesn't it's not uh very labor intensive but um you know we I also I do um I have done some catering uh on a small scale because it's just me so on a small scale and I and like I say I like to give everybody their their stuff fresh as a matter of fact, I, uh, I kind of grumble when a person says, oh, I can't make it tonight. I'll come pick it up later, like tomorrow or whatever. And I'm like, but it's done now. It's done now. I want you to get it fresh. <laughs> so you did such a great presentation and we really appreciate you being on the show with us today. So how can our guests actually start purchasing if they want to do a juicing program with you or purchase any of your products how can they where can they get information from all right so my website is www.abundanthealthforlife all words dot weebly w-e-e-b-l-y dot com abundanthealthforlife dot weebly dot com and um i have a facebook page as well uh, abundant health, uh, uh, abundant health, vegan and vegetarian lifestyle. And I have a Instagram uh, page, uh, abundant health 1127. And that's how I can be reached. Um, I, I would like to say my website is user friendly. <laughs> okay, great. But anyone that has a problem, uh, please email me at Abundant Health for Life 1127 at gmail.com and I'll get right to you. I'll get right back to you. 
or send me a direct message on either the Instagram or on my Facebook page. Awesome. And I'll answer you right away. Beverly, thank you so much for, for coming in and providing us with all this information on how we can continue to be well and, and add this nutrition to our bodies. So I'm sure you may be getting some calls, some emails, some Instagram uh, uh, loves and, and all that good stuff. Um, so we really appreciate you with being with us today. Thank you so much. And I'm sure we may even have you back because uh, uh, Pastor Jacqueline and I, we always are doing health. We do a health segment together. So we'll have to have you back. And maybe you can come back and do a demonstration for us. We would like to see oh, that. that do a demo. Amazing. Yes, yes. All right. Great. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here with everyone. Thank you. So right now I am going to tell you Pastor Jacqueline's purpose push of the week for this week. Um, it's to challenge yourself for trying to do some juicing um, or get in contact with Beverly so that you can taste some juicing so that you can start allowing your body to get those nutritions in it. And um, so I want to tell you a few things about juicing. Juicing allows you to get your daily dose of fruits and vegetable. It increases your energy level. It decreases as Beverly told us, inflammation and resets your body. Um, it protects against disease. As you can see, um, we had a testimony today from um, Rhonda Thomas who told us about the cholesterol as well as Beverly's husband. So you see that it also can potentially lead to weight loss, which Beverly actually shared with us how her and her husband through that 60 day juicing fast actually lost a lot of weight. So we just, uh, want you to go out and take that challenge. Try to do, if you can't do juicing on your own, then maybe perhaps you can actually try Beverly's juicing um, for, for that particular challenge. And so today for some live, love, and laugh facts about wellness. Let's see. John 1010 10 states, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So God already tells us in the word that he wanted us to have an abundant life. So why not have abundant health and wellness? So skipping meals, especially breakfast, is not healthy. The World Health Organization states that there is less than one physician per 1,000 people. And I'm sure that Beverly can concur to that since she's a nurse. You know, I think that's why we have so many nurse practitioners out there because we don't have enough doctors. A lack of exercise may cause as many deaths as smoking. Can you guys believe that? When I seen that statistic, I was like, are you kidding me? But we need to exercise. And if we can't exercise, then we need to juice because Beverly's saying that she's healthy, but she's just been doing juicing because she really doesn't like that exercising. And so an apple a day can reduce levels of bad cholesterol. And wellness is 95%, you hear me guys, 95% self-care that you can't assign to someone to keep you well, self-care. So that's the end of our show for today, but stay tuned for next week. It's gonna be exciting if you can come back and join us because next week, Pastor Jacqueline's masterclass will actually be uh, presenting um, so there'll be some students from the masterclass and they're going to speak their truth about being resilient. So there's going to be several stories that are going to be shared about how to be resilient and keeping every, keeping you going. So we look forward to seeing you next week and thank you. And it's been an honor and a pleasure for doing the show on behalf of Pastor Jacqueline Duncan today. Thank you guys. <laughs>